everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we are going live to teach you how to paint this beautiful sunflower. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about all of the wonderful tools that we have to help us get started. All right, so today I have my Big Daddy brush, and then I have my Mama brush, and then Cute Little Buddy brush, and then a little bit brush, and then I even have a T90 little brush <laughs> for all kinds of fine detail work. And then we've got some paper towels, and then I've got my paints all loaded up here, ready to go. I've got black and white and a bright primary yellow and some gold and some brown. And I do have green coming, but I'll push that into the plate later, so we'll get going with that a little bit later on. But I also have our Speaking of all that paint, we also have our paint kit. Hello, Rhonda, welcome, welcome. Happy Labor Day weekend. All right, so all of our supplies all ready to go. And by the way, we have everything you need for the kit for this online. I am painting a much bigger scale today. So online for shipping to keep the boxes small and shipping down, we usually just sell eight by 10s or 11 by 14s. But in order for y'all to see this really well today, I'm gonna go ahead and work on a 16 by 20. So. Yay, so we'll have a better look at all the detail. Hello, Kathy, welcome. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to go ahead and get started with my Big Daddy brush here. And I'm gonna work into these really big petals. And if you're working on a smaller canvas, then I would recommend the Mama brush. And I'm always going to start light. So never start with all the black. That's always the very last thing that we do. You wanna start with the lightest first. Always get that base light, light color down first. That way it's very bright and it's vibrant and it doesn't get muddy with all the darks first. So protect your light. That's just a good rule in general anyway, right? And then uh, we're gonna start with, here we go. We're going to start with a dollop of that primary yellow and then a little bit of our white and then a little bit of our gold. So we're gonna mix all of that together. Then I also keep all of these impure forms nearby too to go ahead and push into the mix as well. All right, so I've got that off to the side as a mixed creamy color. And then I've also got these in a pure form. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to start with mostly primary yellow first. But I did wanna show you that mix. So again, the mix that I have to create that fourth color, if you will, is all three of these together, which is the white, the primary yellow, and the gold. So it makes this really fun, kind of creamy, buttery color. Hello, Linda, welcome. And then I've got all these in a pure state. And boy, I'm gonna have to wash that black. Pay attention there, I didn't want that to get in there. All right, so I'm gonna start with my primary yellow. And I didn't clean the brush off, I know I've got some of that mix still on the brush, but that's okay, because they're all gonna mix and flow together anyway. So I've got my bright primary yellow, and I'm gonna go ahead and push into this shape. Now we did this beautiful shape here with our templates, and then I went ahead and traced around it with a pencil, then I did Sharpie around it. Hi, Donna, welcome. And then I love the Sharpie on this because it bleeds through and then I can have a really fun, sloppy time. <laughs> so this just makes the painting process very um, easy and therapeutic and I don't have to worry about all this line work in the beginning. So see how it just bleeds right through. So it gives me a lot more flexibility as I'm pushing in those highlights and doing a lot of my blending here in the beginning. Now at the very end, I will have to uh, be more focused at the very end and do my cut in work and be very tidy with the black at the end. But in the beginning, I can relax with this process and push in all these lights with just a lot of room. So I love this because it gives me lots of room to just you know, be creative and have fun and push it into that space. Even if it gets into the center a little bit, that's okay too. And by the way, I'm still just pushing into mostly primary yellow. I might hit into a tiny bit of that creamy color that we mixed up. And I just wanna get really good coverage over the surface area. But again, mostly primary yellow to begin with. And it touches into a little bit of that gold color. 
and we'll take this all the way around. And I hope everybody's having a really beautiful day out there. I don't know what everybody's doing. Hopefully something fun. The weather sure is nice for Labor Day. Labor Day weekend. <laughs> all right. So this is all my brights. Now, while I still have this in place, what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and work some of these other colors into it. All right, so I'm going to switch gears here. I'm going to put my Big Daddy brush into the water. Um, acrylic paint does set up and dry very quickly, so you don't want to just leave it resting anywhere laying around or it'll harden up and turn your brush into a stick. Uh, so protect your brushes and you know wash them out immediately if you can, but if not, then make sure you at least put them off into water. All right, so now I'm going to take my little bit brush here and I'm gonna go ahead and push into a little bit of the gold to start with. So I'm gonna take that little bit, push into that gold. I had that to begin with on my plate here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and push this into each one of these little petals. So this just creates a really nice, fun little accent. And I'm just pretty random about it. Hi, Tina, welcome. And I like to use more of the flat side of the brush as I'm doing this so that it just gives me a nice light hand. So a nice, fun accent. And you do get a little bit of a soft, wet blend because the primary yellow is still wet, so you get that nice, soft blend. And then you can do a few little touches of this. Now, I'm gonna make my brush a little bit thinner, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick little spin here into the paint. And then I'll just make a tinier line on some of these little petals that are behind. Just quick little touches here. All right, now for a little bit of the white highlight. Okay, so that same brush, I'm gonna go ahead and you can rinse that off, reuse. Now I'm gonna come into some white with a little bit. All right, so on this one, you can come in on the other side or sometimes you can softly blend into that other one. Hold on, I need a little bit of a bigger brush here. I also use some primary yellow again to soften out some of these that I feel like are too harsh over the top. So for example, on that one, it's a little bit harsh and contrasting over the top, so I'm gonna come back in with a little bit more of the primary yellow. Work that in over the top, and then I might even come in with that touch of white then. Nice accent over the top. So again, soft blend with a little bit more of that primary yellow. And it's really, now it gets to the point where we start to play a little bit more, more playful and you're working in with all three colors, just alternating those all together. So I'll be working in with a lot of the primary yellow, the white, and the gold. So I'll push back into this with some of that primary yellow. And then just do a little touch of white. Another little fun accent of white. So it just kind of depends on your mood for that petal as you take it around. And you can make some of these very dramatic or you can softly blend them together.
All right, now I'm gonna come back in with a little bit more of my primary yellow. Just kind of sweep in a little bit over the top. So again, the mix on this, primary yellow, some of that yellow ochre, and then some white. Oh no. <laughs> I knew it. That black snuck into my paint. Okay. So I always say there are no mistakes, only possibilities. So now we have a lesson on how to do some cleanup. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay, so on this one, what I'm gonna do, since it's still very much on top of the surface, I'm gonna go ahead and just lift that right off. So it just scraped right off. I got lucky. <laughs> I really did. But if you catch it pretty quick, lay it flat, and you can lift it right off. The other thing you can do is, if it, see how that just lifted completely off the top? Now, if that is not happening and it's doing a soft blend and with your paint, it really gives you a big old oopsie. What you can do is you can take a clean brush with a little bit of water, make sure you place it flat, and then you can push some water into it and then take a little tiny Q-tip or a little tiny paper towel and you can actually dab right on top and lift off too. So we do that a lot in classes when people have little oopsies like what I just had and then we do clean up all the time. We call it like painting surgery. All right, so I'm gonna be a better art teacher now and not use a plate with black on it. Because <laughs> so, <laughs> my black is just, oh, it's like running into my paint. I know better, I don't know what I was doing. You know how sometimes you know better and you just do stuff anyway? So, it happens. Right now, what I need to do, I'm gonna reload this plate. See, I'd like to blame it on the alcohol, but I'm not drinking, so <laughs> just, it's just because I'm being a goofball and not paying attention to what I'm doing. That's okay. All right, so here we go. I don't have any more black now to, hello, Bhavna. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, how is the UK? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and push back in paint over that surface since I have to do a lift off and clean that one up. And I'm just gonna softly blend all those beautiful colors together. Get a really nice mix there all together. Oh, thank you, me too. Yeah, somebody asked me the other day what my favorite painting was, and I had to say, well, I think it's sunflowers. That was like the first thing I thought about. So very cheerful. And you know what else? Um, both my kids, they love yellow as their favorite color. Oh, good. Yes, we're the same here. We're, I think we're at about 90 degrees. So we're pretty hot here. And then next week we get into some cooler temperatures. All right, still sweeping in that color and getting a nice soft blend. So again, just working in layers. Lots of fun, pretty layers on here. And then I still need to work into the, I'm shedding today. I let my hair go curly today. And when I let my hair go curly, it becomes kind of giant. <laughs> I become the Bob Ross of painting, like the female Bob Ross. I tame it with a cowgirl hat, but the reality is my hair is just about that big and giant. Hi, Leota, I'm just not seeing your name. <laughs> All 
All right, so now I'm gonna come into these little, cute little petals that are kind of tucked behind here. And so I'll mix in with a little bit more of this primary yellow and get another layer over the top of those. Maybe a little bit of white in there too. So we push in a little bit of white, a little bit of the that primary yellow. Push that back in here. And then once we do, at the very end, when we get that cut-in work done, and when we start to also do the outlining around these little petals here, boy, it'll really make these petals pop. And so they're looking very raw at this point. Certainly very raw and unfinished, and that's okay. We're just gonna be really patient with it and get more of these beautiful layers of bright, bright yellows and golds and white accents into the mix here. All right, very nice. Okay, so this gives me a good foundation. I still have more layers of accents that I need to go ahead. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, this is my favorite lipstick in the whole world. And I do not so people ask me about it all the time. I get it a lot. It's weird to get compliments on lipstick, but I actually get compliments on this lipstick. But um, it does match my hat. It's really bright. <laughs> it's a really bright pink. But it makes my, um, I feel like it makes my face light up better. I don't know. And then, then again, hopefully, it's not just me thinking that. <laughs> Sometimes... Sometimes people are really misguided and they think certain makeup is helping them and then they think it looks so bright and shiny and pretty and, you know, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> For now, it seems to be working. Okay, um, let's see here. So we have lots of bright, pretty yellow over the surface area. And then next shade up. So we always start light and then go from lightest to dark. So the next shade would be our green for our beautiful stem here to support everything. So then I'm gonna come in with some cadmium green here. So I'm gonna push this on my plate. A little push of that. About a quarter size dollop. And then let's get some uh, bright yellow green. And I'll do, oops, not gonna get very far fishing out of that. Okay, so brand new paint. Let's peel off a little foil seal here. And then I'll do that pea size amount there. It's a big pea, big healthy pea. Okay, and I've got my gold nearby as an accent, but also if you're using our paint kit, um, cadmium yellow is a great color to work into the mix. So here's my cadmium yellow. Hi, Audrey. Happy Labor Day weekend. All right, so now I'm going to use my Mama Brush. All right, so what I did, Mama Brush is just moist put her into the water, but then dried her off completely, squeegeed out all the water, all ready to go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and push into the green and then the, that lighter yellow green. And we'll start with that first. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this into my stem. And the hold on the brush, this feels like the same way that you would hold a pencil or a pen. So you get more of that line edge working for you. And then when we go to fill in, then we can turn our handle just a little bit to where the flat side is facing the canvas. But initially we're gonna go ahead and get the line work done. Just get that outside edge. And because all of the surrounding area will be black, you've got a lot of forgiveness in this first stage. So if you've sharpened it on, especially, and it get a nice bleed through here, you can actually go outside the boundaries of the lines and know that you can come back in and cut in later with black and tidy it all up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that 
first layer down. Now comes the gentle hand, more of the flat side to the canvas to help fill in that area. Keep pushing into this cadmium green, bright yellow green. We'll work into our leaf shapes now. And remember all these shapes that you see, you do not have to know how to draw. We have a traceable for this. Makes it really easy. I'm just getting that flat surface area down. So just flat color over the surface. I will do an accent color later, but for right now, again, just getting that basic color down. All right, so I had to press using the edge side, line edge. Hi, Cindy, and thank you. All right, so the line edge to get all around the edges, but then I need to fill in to the surface area. Turn that brush over to the side. By the way, if you're wanting to get more of a delicate hand as you're working into some areas, you can hold the brush more out to the end of the handle and that will also give you a very delicate hand, light hand. So it allows a little bit more paint to kind of rest on the surface of the canvas. Keeps you from being so heavy handed. All right, and then I need to work in a little bit of the detail of the leaf now. So I will come in with my little bit brush and a little bit of that gold and then I will do a soft little rounded curve there right in the center, kind of twist it around, make that come down the center. And then up in here, I've got a little bit of that gold that I just kind of lightly place on the side. And then a soft little blend of this gold up in here. Kind of just twirl the brush on the side. Leave that little accent happening. Then I'm gonna work back in here with my little bit brush. Another another size of my, I call all these little bits. And then I'm gonna come back in with some cadmium green. I have big little bits and little, little, little bits. T90 little bits. <laughs> so, all right. That bright yellow, I'm actually running out of that, so let me kind of reload a little bit here. This was the bright yellow green paint. And this is one of my bigger little bits. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a soft, light, delicate hand of that bright yellow green, that lighter yellow green, just kind of lightly place that underneath that curve of gold. and then take that all the way down there. And then just fill in this whole section with a little bit of that lighter shade of green. And then over here on this side, push into a little bit of that gold, a little bit more of the gold. It will kind of work into this side of the leaf kind of lightly take diagonal strokes out to the side there and then work that into a nice soft blend. And then I'm gonna work in a little bit more gold on this one, using as much as I can the light, a light touch and just the side of the brush and just little tiny 
side strokes, hitting on the side of the brush, and kind of working that into that color. And this is that gold color. Yellow ochre, it kind of looks like mustard. really light hand and then I want a little bit of a, a depth of a darker green happening here so I'm actually going to use some of my uh, Viridian hello Larry I finally see you today for some reason when you've been coming on I've been missing people like I don't see them until afterwards all right, I'm gonna go ahead and push into that darker green. This is the Viridian color. Still using my little bit brush. And then I'm gonna go ahead and work into this side with some of that darker color. And just light hand right over the side. Just kind of lightly, softly blend that halfway in. Really light hand on that one. And then I've got a little bit of this darker Viridian Green to also use up here at the top. I'll kind of work that in. It'll have a soft blend and with those lighter greens and then a little bit of that little ochre color that we placed in there earlier and the cadmium green and then that bright yellow green. I'm going to feather back in, like a little crisscross stroke, tiny little feathering stroke here. I'll work back in some of that bright yellow green on this side, push that back into it so I'll get a nice soft blend back into that Viridian, fading in from that other side. And see how I'm kind of not worried about the going out of lines here on this side. I'm giving myself the flexibility and freedom to go ahead and work in that cross stroke, but I know that I'll be coming back in over the top with the green, I'm sorry, the black at the end to do the cut in work. So I just relax with the process and then go ahead and have that freedom to work into that space. Now I just worked in a little bit of that Viridian, just a hint of it on this side here. And I'm going to do a little bit more of this crisscross action here. And then I'll work back and forth with that little bit of softer green, just kind of crisscross it in back and forth. So lots of little crisscross strokes here. Gives me some really nice texture over the surface. All right, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and start to concentrate on the interior part of the sunflower now. So we've done a lot of our brights. Actually, uh, never mind. <laughs> not quite ready for that. Hold on. I'm going to get my stem one more time uh, with a little bit more color. This Viridian and then go back and forth. I forgot about my stem. All right, so I'm going to push in a little bit of this Viridian here. I swear I haven't been drinking yet. I act like it. <laughs> Just, I don't know. You know, it's one of those days. Maybe, maybe Joe put something in my coffee. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so I pushed in that Viridian to start with, 
And then now I'm doing some of that really pretty bright yellow green and I'm gonna push that into my stem. Yay, okay. Me likey, all right, I like that a lot better. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and do uh, my I actually have black now that will come into the center. Okie dokie. So now I need my Big Daddy brush and now I need that black. I told you I'm shedding. Got my big curly hair today. It's going everywhere. All right, so I got my Big Daddy pushed back and forth into that black paint. And then I'm gonna go ahead and work this into the center of the flower. All right, just pure black to start with. Now, when you're doing the edge, you wanna give firm pressure to that brush, flow to the black, but you still want a nice thin line edge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, and actually with Labor Day weekend, there's probably a lot of people kicking this party off early right now with a cookout in the backyard. All right, so I'm gonna hold it more like a pencil, get that line work going around the center. Okay, now to fill in, I turn that handle more over to the side. That allows the flat side of the brush to do the work. Gives me a really gentle hand. All right, that fills that in. All right, so beautiful center there. Then I'm going to start to do this really cool pounce effect with my Let's see here, I'm gonna use a Little Buddy brush. All right, so Little Buddy and I will have some brown and some gold. Okay, so I've got my brown and I hit on the side of the brush like that. Wait, am I in the camera? There, okay. <laughs> All right, now, then I hit on the side of the brush here and I take this little pounce effect around in the shape of like a donut all the way around the center here. So we're starting to create that texture that you see in a sunflower. And it's, this is such an easy thing to do. This is, everybody gets so happy because they just love the fact that this is such an easy thing and it relieves stress and you can just hit the side of that brush, relieves your, all your pressure and stress. Get it out. Some of you are really gonna have super textured flowers. <laughs> All right, so again, just tap, 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 or pounce, pounce, pounce. You get that nice soft blend between the two colors, which is really nice. And again, just take it all the way around. So we're creating that initial shape, which looks like a donut. like a beautiful chocolate donut. I haven't had chocolate in forever. All right, so we have that, and then let's go ahead and do the gold neck. So I'm gonna tap on the side. Did not clean the brush because we're just blending all into this. And then I just tap, 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 and we get that nice soft blend which creates that subtlety because we're basically going now with a nice soft blend between the black and the brown and the gold. And I just keep touching into the gold and then just keep working into that donut shape. Just take it all the way around. Lots of repetition. And you want to keep pouncing it out until that gold just 
really kind of disappears too and gets softly blended into the mix because you don't I don't necessarily want to see big I mean a little hint of it still left behind is okay but obviously you don't want to leave it like that you want to just continue to work it out to where it does get a nice soft blend so little hints of it are okay little tiny textural hints. And my donut did get bigger as I continue to do this. It did get, it starts to really kind of fill in. So we just have a tiny little hole right there in the middle of blackness. But, and then just kind of softly go all the way around here. So I do have a soft muted blend between that, those two lighter colors that are pouncing in. Now it still needs a little bit more blending in the center. So then I'm gonna come back in with the black and I'm gonna just slightly pounce from the center and then just all the way around that inner circle to where it softens that blend. And I just pounce in with the black towards the middle. And then that way it softly blends all the way towards the center. And then I can also take a little bit more black and kind of pounce around the outer edge as well tiny little pounce to where it softly blends between the black and that color so that you don't have any kind of a stark difference between where the light starts and ends. So we blended back and forth between our black and that golden brown. So it makes it very, very subtle. All right, so that's our beautiful textural middle of the sunflower. And then what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and start to define the petals. And then also we'll then start to pull out all of the black in the background. Um, but start with the small details first. So our little bit brush will have to be used again here. So I'm going to take a little bit and the black, do a quick little twist here into the paint. That loads it up, but it also twists it into a nice fine point. All right, so now what we've got going on is that line work around each little petal here. And I do try to make this a delicate fine line you can make yours even smaller than this if you want to. For example, I would actually use a really, like a much, you can use a tinier little bit brush too. For example, this one's much smaller. Let me show you what I mean. So if you really prefer a very delicate look, you, know, you can come in with a smaller line here too. So either way is really pretty. And then to help stabilize your hand, you wanna go ahead and rest the weight of your hand on your pinky. You can use that little trick here too. Just watch your placement and make sure that you don't press it into any of the paint that's still wet that you're working on. So, I've got a little bit, I need to be careful where I do it. Come back in with that bigger brush here. Also, um, if you can lay your canvas flat, you can add a little bit of water to this and it will help softly blend out a little tiny fine black line. But the key there is you absolutely have to have your canvas flat, and by that I mean like flat on a table in this position. That way you will not get any water runs. But that is also something that can really help too. And then also, beginners. Uh, Sharpie is not out of the question for this stage. You can do a Sharpie outline. No judgment. It's a nice, fun, easy way to make a nice, thin black line. And because all this background will be black, I can be very, um, see, I can just be very loose with that ending of the black because it's just going to be all black in here anyway. So I'm not concerned about that having to end perfectly. I can actually just sweep it out and know that it's completely 
ended after each little petal here. So it makes it a lot easier on this cut and work. And I will come back in and get those other ones here in a minute, but I'm gonna kind of nice to stay in the groove here on this bottom section. probably turn the canvas here too a little bit. I'll check it and see if you can still see. I don't want to block anybody's vision of it, but if it doesn't work, then I won't do it. But I may. Let's see where we're at. Oh, I think that's going to work really great. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it for just a second here. so that I can really see and get into all these tiny little areas. So as I'm going back into the black, I, I twist it every time. And let me show you. So again, that loads it, but it keeps rounding it out to that fine point. been a while since I've taught a 16 by 20. That was kind of weird. <laughs> I just, ever since we've been at home, I've been doing these 11 by 14s. A lot of space, <laughs> not more. It takes a lot longer. adding just a teeny amount. It's, it's very helpful to add a little bit of water to the black to help it extend and work into this background. But again, so crucial for a beginner to make sure that your canvas is black because if it is in a vertical state like this, you can get water runs very easily. So just be very, very careful with that. And then we still have to come in and do the tiny lines. I 
All right, so much smaller little bit here and the tiny lines in the center. So same little twisting motion where we twist it into the paint, let it rotate out, nice fine point. And I'm gonna start from the center and then have it come all the way around here. Lots of twisting when I go back into my palette here. Yeah, without water, you're going to see a lot more of that transparency and dry brush effect with the black. So that's how the water can definitely be very helpful, as it'll eliminate that. Just curious, is anybody going out of the lake today? Any boating people out there? I'm very happy for you if you are. <laughs> I am not. I want to be a lake person. I really do. <laughs> it's a dream. My mom has a lot of property out in Norman and we keep telling her we need to go out there and just dig our own, just dig one, make it happen. Not sure how easy that is. This process will teach you patience. <laughs> I'm also, I'm getting a lot of line work that's coming back into my beautiful texture here. So I will have to re-pounce a little bit. so that I don't lose that texture because I can see those little lines. It's subtle, but I can see them coming in. We're almost all the way around. And that nice little soft blend that happens with that yellow, I actually really like that, that texture, so that doesn't bother me at all. All right, but again, retexturing here. So what I'm going to do is take Little Buddy and just a little touch more of the black, hit on the side, and just lightly pounce 
back into that little circle and eliminate any of those little crisscross shapes that are coming back into the center there. I want to reestablish that little pounce circle of texture. So it's very, it's a subtle thing, but it makes a difference. So it's just light, light taps on the side of the brush with that black. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the canvas back and make sure you can still see that really well. Okay, the deal. All right, so now I still have a little bit more cut-in work to do. Not... I got a little brush for that. That is bothering me. I got a little goober here. All right, better. Okay. So now I'm gonna do the cutting work down here around all of the leaves. So I've, I've still got my little buddy brush in hand, so I'm gonna continue using that. Press firmly into the black paint. Let's take a look at it. It still has a really nice thin line edge. So I can go ahead and work around these edges here. Allows me to easily do that edge work around those shapes. And as I load up, I keep giving firm pressure. That way it still keeps that line edge really tight at the end. Makes it easier to do that cutting work. So getting all of this meticulous work out of the way, because when we do start to fill in with the black, then that part will be really easy once we've kind of knocked out all of this detail work here. So I have a nice long line happening here, so I'll take that all the way down. And then a long line here, and then we'll go ahead and fill in. Now as we start to fill in, especially in these tiny areas, we need to go ahead and transition how we hold the brush and hold it a little bit more over to the side with that crisscross action. Just kind of work that back and forth for a little bit of texture and good coverage. Also a lighter hand that helps us fill that in. Because when you're still working on the line edge, it, you get transparency because the brush is kind of digging into the paint a little bit and creating a line. So you want to go right back over it with the flat side of the brush and then lightly kind of feather that out with that little bit of crisscross action. So then here we're going to make sure we go back over all of our cutting work to get really good coverage right up to that line. And then again as we start to work into the larger area, then we want to Again, crisscross it out so you get that nice texture over the surface. And I'll still use a pretty small brush in these. We've got some tight areas in throughout here around the leaves, but once we get back out to this wide open space, 
then I will definitely shift gears to a larger brush so that we have more freedom and also just it's a much larger brush to help us get into those larger areas more quickly. I think it's easier to use. We're just about out of the tiny areas. We'll do one more little section in here. All right. Oh, and let's go ahead and knock this out. That's kind of a little tiny area. So we'll just kind of crisscross that back and forth. Get that nice little bit of texture in there. All right, so we have our detail work done. Now we're more home free with bigger brush. All right, so I'm back to using uh, Big Daddy here and just black paint. And the brush stroke will be, of course, when you get near an edge, you have to turn it over to the side, line edge. But then as soon as you get back out to the large area, then you wanna go ahead and turn that brush more over to the side. And again, just light crisscrosses, light hand, and then crisscross back and forth. That will give you really nice texture over the surface area. And it keeps those transparencies from happening. And then also you'll notice that when the paint dries, you will see brush stroke lines. So it's very helpful. You don't want these long lines like this showing. Um, you wanna make sure this gives it a nice texture and it looks really nice when it's dry. You see that nice painterly texture happening. So keep the little crisscross tight. Little tiny X's over and over and over again. And then that will look really nice when it dries. And if it does require a second coat, of course you can always add a second coat to it and just continue on with that. Again, same pattern that goes like this. And definitely having a light hand requires you hold it more parallel to the canvas where the flat side of the brush can face the canvas. Sweep that bottom there. I'm gonna work back into it with that crisscross motion. I'm gonna go ahead and get my good coverage here on the edge. I will work back into that with a crisscross for texture, but I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I've got good coverage over that rounded edge side too, because sometimes that peekaboo can hit you on the edge. Now, back to our crisscross, working into this whole shape here. And sometimes that little peekaboo can sneak up on you, especially after it dries, you might see some emerge. Or sometimes it depends on where reflective light is happening. So I always encourage you to take a step away from the painting and look at it from different angles and make sure that you don't have any of that peekaboo happening with the white canvas coming through. Again, 
really light hand back and forth. And I want to extend that crisscross all the way to the border to make sure it's just completely textural. Seeing a little bit of peekaboo, so I'm just touching those up. And then make sure you go back over with that little letter X, letter X stroke. Almost done with our black. Little letter X's. Come right up next to that line edge. Let's pull out into the larger area. And then crisscross it out. and white peekaboo over there. All right, I'm seeing a little bit. Just crisscross that out. And we pounce there. Okay, so now just a little bit more detail here. I want little white accents on my petals. Hi, Deborah. Happy Saturday to you too. <laughs> me too. I love sunflowers too. They remind me of my children smiling at me. All right, so I'm taking my little bit brush, a little bit of white, let's push into that. And then just little tiny accents here of white, just right over the top. So the shape on this, it kind of feels like you make a parentheses. And it's just a little tiny accent that comes over the top of the petal. And then let's do a little bit more, just a tiny one. I'm intentionally making my line just a teeny bit tinier. 
little tiny accent on those petals that are coming from behind. So it's just like a little push and then lift off with a light hand. And then I'm going to take my little bit brush one more time and do one more dramatic push with just some bright primary yellow just right over the top here. Just adds that little touch of that bright right over the surface area. You do want to be careful that you don't accidentally push into your black at all because you don't want it to get muddy with that. That's that's kind of a tricky cleanup at this level. So if necessary, you might want to just let it all set up and dry because we just did a lot of black. So to me, it's safer to let that set up and dry. For the sake of time and going live, I think, I mean, I just go ahead and do it, but no pressure at home and you have plenty of time for that to go ahead and set up there. All right, still using my little bit in the same color family so I don't clean it all up. I'm just gonna go ahead and twirl into that gold. And I'm gonna rework a little bit of the line work here. Get kind of a soft edge right through that center. I kind of twirled it as I went. Now come in with a little bright, bright primary yellow. And now back into that light green. Softly blend that in over the top. And now Viridian. Gold through there. And then I'm going to add one more little hint of gold through the stem. Just a little accent. All right. I think that we are pretty much done here. And then I know I have lettering on the inspirational one that says, you are my sunshine. However, I'm just going to talk about that and give guidance. My paint is so wet right now that if I were trying to do white on top of black, it would just be gray for days and not look quite right. So let's just go ahead and do a little switch here and talk about this. I'm gonna put this one here in the back so you can still see it. Please stay, don't move. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's look at this model here really quick. So here are some tips that you can do with lettering. Um, now, if you are using our traceable and smaller size canvas that comes with the kit, then you can just use the traceable and um, you can actually just place it right over the top with graphite paper and just trace on. The, and you'll see the pencil over this uh, black paint, believe it or not. It actually works. And then you can just paint over the top with white. Free handing, there's some couple couple different things you can do. Um, still, pencil just shows up right over the top. You can use a ruler and do some line edges to help you know give you a guideline so that it's nice and even. And then use your pencil to go ahead and do all your letters first, and then that way you're happy with the placement and where it, that way you know you won't run off of the canvas and that everything fits into the space. And then once you go over the top, then what I like to do is use my little bit brush. All right, so here's a little bit brush, this guy right here. And let's see, just white paint. I do that little 
twirl into the paint. I'm actually getting a little bit of black. I need to be careful. That one's kind of messed up. Actually, let's go to this one. All right, so I do a little twirl there. So that will load the brush with paint, but also twirls it into a nice fine point. And then you can just help brace your hand, steady your hand for lettering. You can rest the weight of your hand on your pinky that helps stabilize your hand. And then you can follow along just right over the top of your pencil marks to do your lettering. So in this case, I'm just kind of going over what I've done in the past here. But that gives you an idea of how that would work. So that is a fun little tip on lettering, but of course our kits make it really, really fun and easy because it's all the lettering is done for you. So check that out if that part of this process really intimidates you. But all right, so that is our beautiful sunflower painting. Very exciting. So thank you so much for joining us. Y'all have a beautiful weekend. Happy Labor Day to everybody. Have a great day. And I will see you for sure. I know it's this coming week. Um, I may have to do some rescheduling, but for sure Tuesday or Wednesday. We'll see. One of those two days. So, yes. I will see you at least twice this next week because I'll be coming in and doing a couple live shows this week. So check our Facebook and please join me for that. And I thank you again so very much for today and have a beautiful rest of the day.